Welcome to Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California, one of the most iconic landscapes and national parks in the national park system. And just a real signature landscape here in the Southern Mojave Desert. Thanks for joining me on this little excursion. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey sharing with you some of the geologic wonders that we have in our area. And what we're gonna do today is focus on a couple different places in Joshua Tree National Park, look at some processes, look at rocks, geologic features, probably hopefully hit on a lot of the common things that people see in the National Park and have questions on. Um, so let's start with, I mean, there's the obvious trees that make this place iconic, a, a part of the Yucca family, but we're gonna look at the rocks themselves. And most of Joshua Tree National Park consists of this kind of rock right here, uh, this granular, um, intrusive igneous rock, a type of granite. We're going to call it granitic rock, but technically these are called quartz monzonites, at least a lot of the ones in Joshua Tree. Um, but for most people, it looks a lot like a granite, and it's sort of in that family. So this was all molten magma that cooled and solidified underground about 75 million years ago during the Cretaceous. Uh, and then subsequently, all this this cooled magma has been has crystallized, solidified, and then been uplifted to the surface. Rocks above have been eroded away to reveal this, this rock we have here. It's made of several different types of minerals. You might be able to pick out some of the larger crystals in here like this uh, potassium feldspar crystal I'm pointing to, quartz, um, biotite, other types of minerals that we see in it. Um, but one of the signature features of this rock is the way that it weathers in this landscape. So as these rocks have cooled and solidified, they develop fractures, joints within the rock. And then the rocks tend to erode um, and create spherical shapes. You might be able to see a lot of these rounded shapes up here. Really, the, the landscape almost looks like just a bunch of boulders, like as if there was a you know, giant flood or some other event that just piled a bunch of boulders on top of themselves. But this is actually bedrock. These rocks are in place. Um, they've ju they just erode into these spherical shapes, something we call spheroidal weathering. You might be able to pick out on this hill just across uh, the road here, some of the nearly horizontal and then also vertical fracture sets or joints. So it starts out like that and then as um, the rock is eroded and weathered along those joints, eventually becomes this, this spherical shape like we see with all these boulders here. Uh, some other cool features we see in these rocks is they're often cut by these like linear um, dikes and these are called aplite dikes. So aplite's just a really fine-grained uh, intrusive rock similar to a granite but the crystal size is much smaller. These would obviously happen after the the rock had mostly solidified and cooled. As it cools, it fractures, and then there's just a little bit of magma left in the system to inject into that fracture and then cool and solidify. A lot of the aplite dikes stick out. You might be able to see that this one's actually sticking up out of the rock. It's a little bit harder and more resistant than the rocks that surround it. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, Kind of wander around here's a nice feature right here um so the other thing we often see with these granitic rocks is desert varnish and as a rock climber this is something we love to see because it not only makes the rock a little bit harder but it provides great handholds and features things that we can use when we're ascending the rock so you might be able to see as i look back up here some places where there's a darker varnish or coating on the rock so that's called desert varnish. Um, its origin's a little bit enigmatic. There's some folks that think that there's uh, biological activity and microbes that have a little bit to do with it forming. Uh, others think that it's more abiotic, but it's a manganese um, iron oxide that forms on the surface of the rock. Let's just do a little boulder hopping here and see if we can see anything else of note. And then the other thing I want to do is talk about this landform here, this, this seemingly big pile of rocks sticking up out of the flat desert environment. And we see these in other places. There's a small little one over here, one back here behind the road. In fact, let's just start, start with that since I've got my handy dandy 
diagram ready to go. So let's look at a diagram that can explain how these uh, little small mountains or peaks rise above the flat uh, desert floor here. So if we start with a situation like this, just some mountain peaks made out of rock, uh, and then we add the effects of weather, right? So we're gonna have water and rain fall out of the sky. It's going to erode the rocks, and that sediment then, as the rocks get weathered, is gonna be transported down into the valleys. So over time, what happens is the mountain peaks themselves become smaller, their topographic relief becomes less because we start to fill these valleys in with sediment. And then we end up with these small little peaks, just the very tippy top of the mountain sticking up. And it's given this name of an inselberg as a landform feature in desert environments. So these just tippy top of the peak uh, mountains that we see that have been surrounded and buried largely by sediment. Um, and so that's a lot of what these peaks are here in Joshua Tree. So they're actually um, inselbergs. So let's just wander around for just a minute or two and then we'll head a little bit further into the park and see what else we can find. I'll be sure to put all my locations of where I do videos under the description in case you want to revisit any of these places on your own. So we're seeing lots of spheroidal weathering in here, these big rounded boulders. Some of the aplite dikes cutting them, a bit of desert varnish. Uh, we can see a dike cutting right up through this small gully. So maybe uh, about 10 inch or what would that be? 25 centimeter thick aplite dike cutting right through the rock layers. And it looks like it even continues up a little bit further. You can see it cutting through the rock layers up here. So another nice plate of desert varnish down on this piece here. So we'll head down the road a bit and we'll do some more video when we find something else that we want to look at and discuss. Thanks. Okay, a little further into Joshua Tree National Park and pulled over here to show you an interesting feature. So we talked about this granite forming as magma cooled and crystallized underground. Now, of course, as that magma body is in the subsurface, it has to intrude something, meaning there has to be existing rocks that it either uh, melts or incorporates. It has to exist in some other rock body. And so you can nicely see here uh, the view of Ryan Mountain. You can see the, the light colored rock. That's our granitic rocks. That's our Cretaceous Age granitic rock that forms the bulk of the scenery in Joshua Tree National Park. But then there's a sharp line right near about maybe about a third of the way down from the summit. And you can see much darker rocks that form the summit area of Ryan Mountain. And those are the older rocks that existed that the magma intruded into. So essentially, as we look at the top of these light colored rocks, we're looking at the roof of that magma chamber that existed 75 million years ago. And so this portion of rock that exists above this magma body, um, now granite of course, is what's known as a roof pendant. Uh, so these pre-existing rocks that are sitting above those, it's what's known as a roof pendant. And you can trace it from this mountain over here, uh, over into this area, and the trees are in the way here, but um, up on just past these two knobs here, there looks like there's some darker rocks sitting above that as well. So that defines the actual um, upper limit of the magma chamber. In most places in the park, the roof pendant, the rocks above it, have been completely eroded away. But here at Ryan Mountain, we can actually see the roof pendant sitting above it. I believe those are metamorphic rocks above there. I think it's the Pinto Nice. So it's a metamorphic rock known as Nice that's sitting above uh, the granitic rock there. So, but just beautiful view of that scenery and that geologic story.
Well, right along the road here, we have a nice exposure of those dark rocks we saw high on Ryan Mountain. They're exposed right here at road level. The um, roof pendant, those pre-existing rocks that all this magma at Joshua Tree intruded into. Um, and so I thought I'd take a minute and give you a nice look at these these rocks here. So we've got uh, metamorphic gneiss, these banded alternating light and dark layers. This is a high grade metamorphic rock. So it forms under very high temperatures and pressures. Looks like in places there's also, you can see hopefully some of the sparklies in this rock, some, some schist as well. So we have nice and schist, uh, typical high grade metamorphic rocks that we see when rocks are subjected to high temperatures and pressures. Um, so these are the rocks that the magma intruded. Just give us a nice little look of these before we head on our way. Just wonderful exposures here right off the road too. So you can see that banding. So these are, should be, I believe these are Proterozoic in age, maybe like 1.6, 1.7 billion years old, uh, among some of the oldest rocks we find in this portion of California, what they would call in this area uh, basement rocks. So I wanted to give you a nice little look at these. Some of the banding in there. And then that grades over into some darker rocks. And hard to say if that's just desert varnish we can still see some of the banding here in this metamorphic nice and then looking down the hill towards 29 palms so yeah just thought I'd give you a little look at these uh, roof pendant rocks these metamorphic rocks that the magma intruded into about 75 million years ago Hope you enjoyed this short tour of some of the geologic features here at Joshua Tree National Park. Thanks again for joining me. Appreciate all you can do to like, share, subscribe, promote the page, promoting geologic education. Uh, if you want to donate, there are video, there's links under the video description and there's a thanks button at the bottom right of the viewer. So thanks again for joining me. Until next time, we'll see you out there.